out the, the, the call to generous giving. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. Faith's a wonderful armor bearer, too. We, we talked last week about a call to generous giving, and so we're going to talk about that again. And my first, my first point here this morning is God is our supplier. Say this. Say, God is my supplier. God is your supplier. The Bible says that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, the apostle Paul wrote that to the church in Philippi because the church in Philippi gave to help uh, bless. They gave in the offerings. They gave gave their tithes. They gave their offerings. And then then he, he gave this promise that God shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.13 says right before that he said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so say that with me say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and so that includes being able to be a generous giver being a, a, a generous giver okay so so when we give we don't want to be cheap Hello? When, you, when, when you, I praise God when I, when I try to bless my kids for Christmas and stuff, I don't try to give them a cheap present, you, you know. Uh, uh, you know when, when they were little, I didn't give them a broken toy or something like that. Now, some of y'all did get that when you were a little kid, remember? Maybe somebody gave you a broken toy or something like that, somebody who was really cheap, and that didn't bless you much. But we, do, we definitely don't want to be cheap when it comes to blessing and to giving. Now, one thing that I found out, though, I was just going to share my personal experience. Once in a while, when I give somebody something really nice, and then they didn't like it very much, you know? And listen, God likes it when you give to him. He likes it a lot when you give to him. Because that's who we're ultimately giving to. We're giving to God. And then later on, you'll be like, well, man, I bought that really nice thing for him, and they didn't like that very much. I think maybe the next time I'll just get him a pair of socks. Did you ever do that? I, I, I did that because some people I can, no matter what I did, you know, I could have bought them a brand new car and they still wouldn't be happy. Uh, you, you know, they'd be like, what? You, you didn't get the color I wanted, you know, or something like that, you know, or whatever. But no, no we're, it's so important. God wants us to have a good giving attitude in our heart. Amen. And not be cheap because actually when we're cheap, we offend God. We offend God. Thank you for that one. Amen. A- amen. Okay. And, and when we're not givers, we see, we don't represent God correctly. We're, we're Christians, right? We're followers of Jesus Christ. We're representatives of Jesus Christ. We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So we want to we wanna represent him good. And whatever we do, whatever we say in our actions and our words, and also represent him what? In our giving. Oh, okay. And so we want to represent him right. And be, but listen, I'll set you at ease. I've got a lot of things that's going to set you. You're not accountable for what you don't have. You're not accountable for what you don't have. You're accountable for what? What you do have. What you do have. You know, okay. And, and I might not be able to do everything, but I can do something. I can do something. And sometimes I'm just praying. Sometimes uh, I just pray for somebody. If God lays on my heart, I'll pray for them. But if I can do something, I do something. A- amen. And it's not according to what you don't have. So don't worry about what you don't have. People have told me before, well, Pastor Chris, I don't have millions of dollars. Uh, uh, neither do I. <laughs> right? So it doesn't matter what, what you don't have, but maybe someday I will have millions of dollars, and that's what I'm believing God for. Okay? But it's according to what you do have, so don't be stuck in waiting. Some people say, well, when I get a million dollars, then I'll just really bless everybody. I'll bless all my family. I'll bless my neighbors. I'll bless everybody in the neighborhood. I mean, I'll just bless everybody when I get a million dollars. When I hit the, uh, what's that lottery thing again? We talked about it last week. The billion dollar, that was the Powerball, and it's like billions of dollars. When I get a billions of dollars, I can bless somebody. You can bless somebody right now. You know, we, uh, we went over to the Light of Life Rescue Mission, me and John. On the way back, I, we gave out a bunch of Snickers bars to the guys, the guys in Light of Life Rescue. They like it when we come. They're like, oh, you're the, you're the Snickers guy. And then so, so when we saw people begging on the corner, somebody was begging on the corner, and we gave them a Snickers bar. And they're like, hey, hey. You know, hey, a Snickers bar, that's, that's good. You, you know, but don't, don't be stuck on waiting. Well, when I get a million dollars, 
You know, maybe you have a granola bar or something like that you can bless somebody with. Don't be stuck waiting for more money because if you're waiting for more money, you're in the wrong spirit. You're in the poverty zone. And I don't want anybody in our church to be in the poverty zone. To be in the poverty zone. You understand what I say? They have a poverty spirit. Okay? You take the right step right now. Be like Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus, remember, he was preaching to the 5,000 people, and they were hungry, and they were, for day, they were there. They were listening to Jesus for days. And then what did Jesus do? He multiplied the loaves and the fishes. Just think about that. If we're going to be like Jesus, I mean, we're going to be, we want to be like Jesus. We're followers of Jesus. God can use you to multiply it when you're given. Now, Jesus said, he said, you give him something to eat. He said, give him something to eat. And they said, all we have is five loaves and two fishes. But they gave it and God multiplied it. And God did a miracle. Amen. And then, and then they p- picked up 12 baskets full when they were done. And, and, uh, and Jesus did miracles for people. Also, too, that this is something I see. Jesus did miracles for people who come to him. People who receive me as a man of God, and they receive me as the man of God. He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet, what? Receive a prophet's reward. People who don't come to me don't receive. And people, listen, people who didn't come to Jesus didn't receive. And also people who don't come to you might not necessarily be able to receive. Be like, man, I can cook a, some of you ladies in here, you can probably get, man, I can cook a beautiful dinner. I mean, I can cook the bomb, you know, and everything like that. But who's it for? It's for the people who come to your your table. Not for the people who don't come, because the people who don't come won't get it. But the people who do come, and the people who do come are blessed. Amen? People who come to your table are blessed. And people, we want people who have come to God's table to be blessed. Are you with me? Amen. So please don't offend God. We're talking about giving here. Please don't offend God with stinginess. Amen. Stinginess. And I'm, I'm not perfect in this area. I'm being perfected and stuff like that. I was talking to Jackie, Dimitri's wife, one time. She said, Pastor Chris, when you go pump gas, do you go in the store and get something nice from, uh, from sheets to, to bring home to your wife? And I go like, no, I've never thought of that. <laughs> do you go in there and get her a flower or something? I was like, no, how about some candy? I said, no, I just think about pumping the gas and getting out of here. And I was like, oh. See, so we all have room for growing, amen? We all have room for growing, a- amen? But, but uh, don't, don't offend God with stinginess. Stinginess is not giving. You know you can offend God by not giving. Yeah. And we need to give a wholeheartedly giving. When we give wholeheartedly, it get, gives God glory. Who gets the glory? God. If you ever get blessed somebody like that, I've blessed people before. God's used me. Thank, thank God I'm, he's going to use me. And, and they get really blessed. And then they start giving glory to God. And sometimes they start crying. And they forget all about me. Is that a good thing? Yeah. Yes. I want them to forget about me. I want them to be saying, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I remember that one time when we were in a different, difficult situation or something. Uh, Brother George Moss uh, uh, sent, sent a check for $1,000. And guess what? I forgot about George Moss. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was like, and then later on, I was like, oh, I think I better call him on the phone and give him a thank you. Amen. 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 Or, or, or now, if you're not calling them on the phone, you can give them a text. Everybody texts us these days. You know. But I get excited about giving. Do you get excited about giving? Amen. Like when you, you know, when you were a little kid and you went to somebody's birthday party and your mom and dad got a present for you to give. And, and you couldn't, I, sometimes I couldn't wait till they would open my present. Because I gave them, I gave them the, I, I thought it was a nice present. You know, and sometimes I helped pick it out. Sometimes I didn't. Especially the younger I was. I didn't have a clue. You, you know, oh, I'll give him a frog. No, Chris, you can't give him a frog. <laughs> I'd like a frog. You know, no, her name is Susie. She doesn't want a frog for her birthday present. I'm like, oh, okay. 
Okay. See, the, the equality, it doesn't matter if you make $100,000 a year or if you make $10,000 a year. I'll say it again. It doesn't matter if you make $100,000 a year or if you pull in $10,000 a year. It's what? Your tithe. What's the tithe on 100000 10. Look, at it. we got some math geniuses in here. <laughs> What's the tithe on 10000 A 1000 Not a hundred. 10000 is a, is a thousand. Amen. I got, the, got, it, got it rolling. So, so uh, a person trying to pay rent and trying to buy diapers is equal with the millionaire with their commitment. And sometimes they go, you don't understand, Pastor Chris, I don't have as much money as the millionaire. No, you don't understand the giving heart. God wants us to have a giving heart. He wants us to be generous givers. It's the commitment, not the gift. So when I get, if I got a gift, somebody gave me a gift today, and I was like, praise the Lord, thank you very much. I'm going to put it on my, on my, on my I was going to say my refrigerator, on my door. I got a magnet today. It was a really nice magnet. Jeff and Cheryl gave me a magnet with their Jeff and Cheryl there. I was like, go out, stick it on my refrigerator, and I'm going to pray for them. And next week, everybody will bring me their magnet of themselves. <laughs> and that's fine. I'll stick it on my refrigerator. I will. Uh, or or my, on my door, and I'll pray for you. And I'll, I'll pray for you. It's, it's the gift. You know, I remember when Joyce and Faith, I forget, I don't remember if they gave me a pair of socks when they were five years old for Christmas. I was like, thank you very much. Come here, Daddy wants to give you a kiss. Listen, our Heavenly Father is better than me. He's better than me. He's better than you. So whatever you get, it's the commitment in your heart. It's not the gift. Amen. So if, 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 if you say, well, I can't afford that. If it's a box of chocolate chip cookies, it could, it's the same, it could be the same equal as $10,000. What? Yeah. If somebody tithing off their food stamps and they buy some cookies mix to bless somebody with chocolate chip cookies, it's the same as if you got a million dollars and you gave $100,000. See, that's the way God looks at it. Are you with me? Amen. And I'm not smarter than God, so you got to do it God's way. So start tithing, start giving, and you will be blessed. And also remember in the church, too, some people think, and you, I know you don't do that, but some people think out there, they think we're doing social work, that we're social workers. And why did Jesus feed, feed the 5,000? Was Jesus doing social work? No. He fed the 5,000 because they came. He fed the 5,000 because they came. The 5,000 men, and then there was women and children, so there was even more of that. But he fed them because they came and not because they were doing social work. We bring what no social work organization can bring. What do we bring? We bring Jesus. We bring the gospel. We're, we're, not, we're not just doing social work. We're bringing Jesus to people. That's the gospel. That's the difference. We're bringing Jesus Christ. Amen. We preach the gospel. Grace is not divine slack. <laughs> some, see, some people, that's what social work people think. And we'll give them some, cut them some slack. We don't have to cut them some slack. We can give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can become born again. And become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Grace is divine empowerment. And when you have Jesus, you have the power. Not slack. There's a difference. We want empowerment, amen? You, you guys are empowered. Listen, like I said before, we've got an amazing church. And God wants you to be healthy financially. And, and you know, also, too, if you're going to be a leader, there's a higher standard for leaders. There's a higher standard for leaders. In James chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall all receive a stricter judgment. We'll be judged of who? Who? Yeah, I heard somebody say it. It will be judged of God. Not you. 
not you. I'll be judged of Jesus Christ, God the Father and Jesus Christ. When I stand before the throne, I'm not going to be judged by you. And you're not going to, praise the Lord, you're not going to be judged by me. <laughs> Amen. You're not going to be judged by me. But you know, listen, Jesus loves you. So let's not judge other people. And, uh, uh, amen. And, and don't, don't let other people judge you. Don't let them judge you. Amen. Sometimes people say, well, the church will pay for it. Well, the church will pay for it. You know, don't worry about anything. Well, the church will pay for it. Oh, who's the church? A lot of times, too, I go like, no, I want to pay for it. Man, man, David said to Rana. Rana said, David, you can offer a sacrifice. I'll pay for everything. And you don't have to do anything. You're just awesome, David. You know, you're the king. You, you, you know, you're, you're an awesome guy. You, you're going to be the king and everything like that. You don't have to sacrifice. David said, no, I want to pay for it. I want to pay for it. I, I don't want the church to pay for it. I, a lot of times the Lord puts it on my heart and different things. No, no the church, when you guys, you know, the, the church offering, the church will pay for it and everything. No, no, uh, I, I want to pay for it. Like in the bookstore, you know, back there, we, we usually buy the books at cost in the bookstore. We don't even make a profit. And then sometimes people say, well, I got to knock the price down. You know, when I buy books at Rama Bible, Rama Bookstore, I don't worry about uh, like, well, this book is on sale for 20% off. I'm like, that's all right. You can have the profit. You can have the 20%. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. And maybe you bless other people too sometimes. You know, I have to make sure I have a good attitude when I bless people and not have a bad attitude. When I have a bad attitude. You ever been in Giant Eagle and the person's like, can't check out or whatever because they're a dollar short and they've taken 15 minutes to get their dollar out of their wallet or whatever. And, I, and a lot of times I go like, wait, here, here, here's, a do- you, here's a dollar. You can have a dollar. <laughs> they guess what? That's the wrong attitude when you're being impatient with people. Okay. But if you want to bless them, then just go ahead and bless them. Or I'll, I'll get that. You know, I have a friend of mine, he sometimes he buys dinners for other people when they're in their re- restaurant. Yeah, have you ever done that? I've done it before. I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God. There are people there and I go like, hey, I would just want to pay for their dinner. Can I pay for their dinner? They're like, oh yeah. Do you want to tell who did it? No. Just pay for their dinner. Just bless them. Just bless their socks off. Amen. I want to move in faith. Amen. I'm sharing this today so that you will move in faith too. You move in faith. Faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes, God must believe that he is and that he's reward of them that do it to least him. And also, I want to be a good example. So, you know what some people need to do when they get water baptized? They need to get water baptized with their wallets. <laughs> Some, some ladies, I think, need, need to take their purses when they get, in, when they get water baptized. <laughs> Hello? You know, you know what I'm saying? Consecrating your money to God. Amen. A- amen. Uh, leaders are held to a higher standard, not only in what we give, but how we handle it, what is entrusted to us. So I want to encourage you, especially those of you in here that are leaders, be gracious. You be gracious and live by a high standard. Okay, and uh, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I th- I'm coming to my last point here this morning. I, t- I look at that. I mean, I'm going to be short. Uh, plan on parting with your money. Plan on parting with your money. Hello? I've known people 98 years old, and they still have all their money, and they didn't give any of it away. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? I'll give it away after I'm dead. No, you're going to be dead. You might as well enjoy it now. Giving away and blessing people. 
Amen. Amen. You can't take the money with you when you die. You can't take it with you. Uh, sometimes we see God doesn't, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we say, I want to say it this way. God doesn't want your money. God wants your honey. I'll say it again. How many remember Winnie the Pooh? Now, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh was this imaginary guy. He was just a stuffed animal, I hope you know. Christopher Robin had these stuffed animals, and he just, all these stories. But now, Christa, Winnie the Pooh's honey was honey. He just loved honey. That was it. You know, I, and one time, he even got stuck in the tree because he was going after his honey. Hello? <laughs> hey, people, listen, God wants your honey. God wants your heart. What is your heart after? That's what he wants. Amen? He wants your heart. He wants your heart. He wants all your heart, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So that's what he wants. Okay, he wants the thing that means so much to you. It could be anything. It could be anything. It could be a boat. Maybe you had a boat or something like that. It could be a car. It could be this, you, you know. And you, and you have to put it, uh, uh, um, make sure it's on. I mean, I love my wife a lot and everything, but I told her before we got married, I said, I'm always going to put Jesus first. And I want you to understand Jesus is going to be first. I remember a long time ago, I made the mistake that I put a girl in front of God. And I used to laugh when guys became suicidal when they broke up with their girlfriend. I broke up with my girlfriend and I became suicidal. I was ready to kill myself. And, I did, and that never happened to me before. And then I was lost because I got my eyes on this girl and I didn't have my eyes on Jesus anymore. But thank God a lot of people move supernaturally. Pastor Hagen had a word of the a Lord in a service one time for me. Pastor Hagen did. And then other people uh, ministered to me a whole lot. This is before I knew Pastor Mark Butler and things like that. And I didn't have a close pastor at the time. But God really ministered to me. And I said, you know something? I'm never going to do that again. Amen. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Jesus, listen, Jesus is supposed to be your honey. You know what I mean? The thing that you treasure the most in your heart, not other things. And, and, uh, and then I understood, I understood. God just supernaturally saved my life and everything. It was just really good. Amen. But he, he wants the thing that, that means so much to you. Amen. And then some guys, when they fail on their job, some guys, because they identify their job with who they are, and then they fail on their job, <clears throat> excuse me, and then they feel suicidal because they feel like a failure. But listen, God doesn't make failures. You're not a failure. No matter what happens, God loves you. And your value is intrinsic. It means it's Christ in you, the hope of God. Listen, God loves you, and it's not based on your performance. God loves the, the, the mental needs person, even though they can't do anything. I, I, or, or what I mean, a mental retarded person. He loves them. And he loves senior citizens who can't even get out of their bed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But we, our heart needs to be set on him. In our whole life. And so be anchored in that. I know maybe somebody needs that. I don't plan on saying that at all. But you can be a good person and still hang out, uh, hang on to things sometimes. And we, sometimes we need to let go. On, but plan on parting with your, your money. Just remember, yesterday's manna has today's worms. Because the manna was to be eaten for that day. For that day. Now, on the last day, on Saturday, uh, on, on Friday, they were supposed to get twice as much manna because they weren't supposed to work on not the, the Saturday or the Sabbath. And then they could get two days worth. But, but you don't want to hold on to things so much until they become worms. Amen? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, 
that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abundance for every good work. And see, and God is going to see us through the situation, well, no matter what you're going through. Say, God's going to see me through. He's going to see you through. And God is going to give us what we need. And, and, and so what are, what are you going to do if God does drop a bunch of money in your lap? What, what happens if somebody did, did that? What's that lottery called? The Mega Million. What happens if somebody wins that and then they decide they don't want it and they put it in your mailbox? <laughs> What, what, what are you going to do? Put bars around your house? Get some Dobermans? <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hire a security company? <laughs> Hello? Get an armored car? A bulletproof car? Whatever. Get the Batmobile. There you go. You know? What, 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 amen. Listen, God gives seed. The Bible says he gives seed to the sower. So if we're a sower, then what will God do? He will give you seed if you're a sower. Say, God gives seed to the sower. I see, I want, I want God to give you seed. I want him to give you seed. I want him to give you seed. Okay, but you just don't eat the whole thing. You just don't sit there in your kitchen and eat, eat all the seed. You, 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 right, or whatever. Now, then what is the purpose of the seed? Is it to eat or is it to sow? You sow, you sow the seed. And God will put seed in your hands of the sower. God finds the sower and he puts resources into the sower's hands. But what comes first? Sowing or reaping? Sowing, you have to sow first. You have to sow. Praise God, my tomatoes are coming in. My tomatoes are coming in. We had two tomatoes already. I heard Brother Joe had got a whole, he had a whole pot of tomato sauce, uh, uh, spaghetti sauce. Praise God. Now, hallelujah. Now, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> Praise God. James 1 verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. So what happens, you can hear the word in a sermon like this and not do anything and what will happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen. You think, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And if you don't do it, then you're not good. Uh, okay. Giving is the way we give glory to God. We give glory to God by giving. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm believing for our church that we're going to be able to give more money. Uh, the most our church has ever gave away is $10,000. Like, what? Got out of town. You, we, we gave $10,000 one time to a minister. Praise God. I'm believing we're going to be able to give more than that. I mean, Keith Moore gave a million dollars to somebody one time. He gave a million. Guess what? If you give a million, guess what? You got to have a million. 